Here's another little project that I've done before many, many years ago, but it's worth replaying um, for a whole new generation of miniaturists. And this is the Christmas turkey. I'm going to put on a board this big, so I want a, a reasonably small turkey, but I might as well make a, a roll ready to make several turkeys. So this is a mix of um, Fimo Champagne and Cernit, um, Cernit Champagne as well, which is a completely different colour from Fimo Champagne, would you believe it, and some white. So there's quite a lot of translucency to it. This is for the flesh of the turkey. Um, I'm not certain I've got the perfect colour for it, but um, preparing quickly when I haven't got some turkey meat in front of me, so you get what you get, really. And then I've made a mix for the skin, which is a fairly translucent mix again, and I've rolled it very thin on the thinnest setting of my pasta machine. It's got some um, ochre in it and some brown. The ochre is the Fimo ochre and the brown is the lightest of the um, Primo browns. It really doesn't matter which material you use as long as it's to hand and you're happy with it. So don't be hung up on which which colours that I use. If you're interest, particularly interested in colour, I do have a book out called my colour book. Um, obviously turkeys aren't in it because it's to do with nature. But um, it does give you quite a lot of, a, of clues about colours. This is very similar to the walnut mix in that, in that colour book. So then you need to make a, a, a roll with the, with the skin on. Now this has cracked a bit because I prepared it earlier and it's cold down here. But um, you want it to join together as near as possible it is perfectly along a line. You don't really want any overlaps. The problem with putting overlaps on if, you, if you've got a, a cane is that it shows up as a lump at the, on the other plane of the cane. So try to not to have any overlaps. So I've cut one line and then I'm flapping this over and then I'm going to find that line just through rubbing it gently and then I can see where the two clays overlap and I can just cut along that line and take that away and they should join up perfectly without any overlaps. Just give them a quick push together. That's a very good way of making sure that you don't have any overlaps in a cane. But you just have to train your eye to look for the slight subtle difference where the, where the two clays come together. Right, so that should be okay. If you've got any um, air bubbles in your cane, if they won't push out to the side, this one will. But um, if they won't push out to the side, um, cut into them on a diagonal. The reason for that is that they will then heal properly. Whereas if you start pressing into it, you get indentations and you don't want that. So um, normally to lengthen a cane, I don't do an awful lot of rolling. I'm mostly... Uh, pull like this and spend a bit of time that seems to be torn spend a little bit of time getting my fingers firmly into it and pressing and pulling So just look at my plate again because I need to get some idea of the scale that I'm using. I've got a little tear in this in this cane, so I'm going to cut it there because I don't want that to be in the middle of a of a piece of turkey. So I'm going to cut that to about that length. Looking at that, that's about how much now? Maybe a little bit and maybe a little bit less than that. I don't want it too big. So that's my, the main part of my turkey. Now the first thing to do is to stuff the turkey. 
before it, before it's even turkey shaped i like to stuff the turkey so before we do anything else let's make some stuffing what i've got here is some um cernit uh cernit champagne some uh fimo ochre no fimo champagne and some leftover green leaf material that should be perfect because it's green leaves and they we need leaves a bit of herbiness into the, in the mix it may not be exactly the right green but it'll do for now it may it may be the sound actually want a slightly sagier green and this is quite bright i'll probably take that bit off and just leave a little bit so to make um to make this mix, you need to look at the proportions and the green needs to be quite a small proportion in comparison. And then just start chopping this up and carry on chopping until you get a really small mix. So it's just like chopping herbs really. You need it to be really fine. So that we can mix it up and make a nice, a nice stuffing mix. There isn't really a better way of doing this, to be honest. I've tried caning it in, but the problem is you cut it off sideways, so you see streaks rather than rather than spots, and you want little lumps. And you want them to be almost undetectable. You don't want it to look like great big lumps of one colour or the other. Right, so now we need to have a space to put the stuffing in. So I take this um, hockey-ended tool. You can use any tool that you're happy with, but a ball-ended tool will do. But I like to make a push, a triangle shape into that, into that um, cylinder. Push a deep triangle. And then pop as much of this as you can get into that hole. Push it into the triangle. And then we need to pull the skin of this cylinder over to cover this central bit and we don't mind if the central bit shows through at all we don't mind that at all so that's the the I, i'd call it the back end of the turkey but it's actually 
the the collarbones in here so it's quite it's actually the, the top of the turkey now we need to do the front what we think of as the front bit which is actually the bottom and once again i push in in a sort of triangular shape and bring this skin up as much as possible to cover this end but i want to leave that open so we've got a sort of there's the chest of the turkey there's the the breast meat there and that's the the top end so let's have a look on the plate and see if that looks about right yeah, that's going to be a, a nice size for that plate. So we've now got to do the wings and the legs. So I'll put that to one side and we'll get some more of this material. Now we need to take it down to a smaller size. So I'll just take a piece off to work with. We need to roll it down to a smaller size. It's so many years since I made one of these. But I can't even remember what size I used to make them. But I remember the wings were very small indeed. So now we need to make the drumsticks. And the drumsticks aren't just drumsticks. They have a back end to them. They have a, 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 a another muscle. So they, um, they need to be folded like that and then this part's the drumstick and we like a nice big leg on the turkey it's my favorite meat so that's going to go there somewhere so now we need another one opposite it so i'm looking at that as being that end and then the drumstick, and then the, um, in Spanish they call it the muslo, the, the main muscle of the leg. It's like the ham, the ham part of the leg. Right, I want to just put a little bit of a, a joining part in that. Right, so this piece is going to just turn in a little bit where the joint's been chopped off. I'll do the same with that. And pop those there. I think that muscle bit's a bit too big. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, pull a bit off. And stick that on underneath because you won't see that and then I'll do the same with this one probably don't need as much of that muscle there either I'll put that one on that side pulling this bit underneath as well so that it sticks on nobody's going to see that little bit And I'll just turn that up a bit. So now we need the wings. And the wings are like a little bit of a zigzag. So just pop that on there. So the wings are a lot smaller. And they're like a little zigzag. So we want a wing tip and then over and over again, like a zigzag. And that's going to go on there. 
and another one on the other side. I'm not too worried about little streaks in this because I can cover it with the colouring when we put colouring on. This one's going to go on this side. Right, so we've got the basic shape of the turkey here. And we're going to want to, to carve it to reveal the stuffing inside. Before that, we want a bit of texture. Not too much, just be very gentle and give it a little bit of a prick all over the place because that's, it's, that's where it's been plucked. But don't be too heavy handed with this. Just take it easy. I think I made this a little bit, that's right, it wants to be a bit fatter. to make this a little bit knobblier because these are quite thin these bits You can, of course, put some bacon or something on the back of this to decorate it, but I'm not doing that in this case. Right, we now need just a little bit of colouring on, and I used to use a glaze, but that glaze is not available now, and in any case, I quite like to, to put these colour colourants on instead, um, because they're more controllable. So I've got a few, a few various browns, etc. And if we want a bit of burnt, we'll put that on the tips, where it might be ever so slightly burnt. Where the turkey might be ever so slightly burnt. A little bit of brown on those tips. And then take the brown well away and go for a sort of more uh, oh gosh I'm not I'm not that kind of an artist so I don't really know what that colour's called is it a is it burnt sienna or burnt on I, I don't really get these colours it, funnily enough I'm a colourist in clay but I don't know the, the paint colours So a little bit of this nice cooked, cooked brown on the parts that look as if they might have cooked more. If it's nearest the surface of the oven, for example. And this crispy skin on the bottom, where we're going to cut it away, that's quite a thin skin there, so that would probably 
cook quite a lot. And then you go down to the lighter colour. Just give it a little dusting. Because what happens is it tends to pick up on the bits that stick out most. And those are the bits that are going to get really well cooked anyway. I'll just put some on this bit underneath where it would get quite well cooked. And that's looking delicious. I could eat that. Right, so we've got our basic turkey now. And now we need to slice it to reveal its uh, stuffing. So just take your single-sided blade and slice sideways into the breast meat. And you shouldn't see too much stuffing straight away. Just fold that over. Take the, the wings right down straight off. And then work your way backwards until you start to see the stuffing. Just taking a few slices off, a little bit of a slice. And somewhere we should start to see the stuffing. There it is. I'm going to cut that piece away because I don't want too many slices that don't have stuffing in them. Oh, actually, I could put that on the base there and then one more that's got stuffing in it one more nice slice and I'm going to actually do a slicing method I normally don't do a sort of ziggy zaggy slicing method and that should just put a few lines into the into the turkey meat we just need a little bit of texture in that turkey meat but not into the skin you can actually I haven't got my glasses on at the moment but you can actually just draw around the edge really carefully to show that that's, that uh, skin is separate or to make it look as if it's separate right so now we've revealed this stuffing and it's not perfect because we need it to be a little bit more uh, rough and and maybe we'll ha maybe you'll find lumps of one colour or another that just don't look quite right. And all you do with that is just pick pick at it a bit to roughen it up. And if you find you've not got enough of one colour, I'd like probably a little bit more green. You can pull it from another part, or you can just take a little bit out of your mix and add just a little bit more in where you want it. And there's your turkey. Now I would serve my tur roast turkey with a few roast potatoes. And they're about as simple as anything you can make. Um, I've just got some of this uh, Cernit uh, champagne. And I'm just going to roll a few potatoey shapes. And it doesn't matter that I've got a bit of this colourant lying around because it just starts off the colour of the um, the colour of the potatoes. I've lost one of my one of my colours. Which one have I lost? I appear to have lost one of the lighter colours, the ochre one, which is a bit annoying. How can I do that? I've not been anywhere. Oh, I see. It's that one. Yep. And it's the brown one that I've put away. I knew I had three. <laughs> so, yeah, just make a few little potatoes. And then you'll chop them up and uh, add some extra colour. So, I'll deliberately get my fingers a bit dirtied.
maybe the dark brown's a bit much on that in that place right so this is the color you're going to use most this lighter one and then just simply chop up your potatoes into pieces And you'll want to take a paintbrush and just give the edges a little bit of extra colour. You can colour the faces, but the bits that need most colour are those little edge bits. And just pop those around the the turkey. Put you can put a few on without taking too much time about it, because they'll be the base that you'll stick the rest on to. But then the top ones you really need to take it take a while about about colouring them nicely as if they've been. Uh, roasted in the oven and I would add just a little bit of greenery of some sort or just um, a little holly leaf or something like that just to to lift it up because otherwise it's a, a riot of brown really um, I'll show you that when it's finished and I'll probably pop a few a couple of little holly leaves there and there perhaps just to lift it a bit don't forget to keep sharing and uh, liking and please encourage other people to subscribe to my channel. The more subscribers we have, the more likely it is that I'm going to carry on making uh, projects for you. I hope you enjoyed that Christmas advent uh, uh, project for the Christmas dinner.